So hi students, so today I am going to make the video on crystal field splitting in square planar complexes. So actually I thought that uh, I have to give a break uh, for my continuous videos but uh, uh, as per uh, the request of many of the students to make uh, the video on crystal field splitting in square planar complex, I am making this video today. So before going to C that is before we're going to discuss how the crystal field splitting occurs in the square planar complexes. First of all, let me discuss some basics related to understand how the crystal field splitting happens in the square planar complexes. Now do remember that crystal field splitting is derived from octahedral splitting via triagonal structure. Now in order to understand the crystal field splitting in square planar complexes, so definitely we have to know how the splitting occurs in octahedral complex. So already I have made the video on uh, the crystal field splitting in octahedral complex. So please before going to watch this video, you do watch that video. Right. So in the square planar complexes, the two ligands approach along the x i y axis. In fact, four lines. Two ligands approaches approaches the metal. Two ligand approaches the metal means the electrons which are part of the ligand approaches the electrons on the metal along the x axis and along the y axis along the x-axis and along the y-axis. Now the electrons present on the ligand are approaching the electrons present on the metal along the x and y-axis means what? Uh, the repulsions will be more repulsions will be more along the x and y-axis. And as the repulsions is directly proportional to energy as the repulsions is directly proportional to energy which I have clearly explained in the previous videos. So definitely those particular those particular d orbitals will occupy the highest energy level. Right, now let us see. Now what is happening students? That is in the case of square planar complexes, the ligands, that is the electrons present on the ligands are approaching the electrons present on the metal along the x and y axis. Now whenever the electrons are approaching the metal electrons along the x and y axis, whatever the d orbital in which the lobes have been placed along the x and y axis will experience maximum repulsion. That is whatever the lobes which are uh, located on the x and y axis will experience maximum repulsion and what is that what is that d orbital in which the lobes are placed along the x and y axis that is what is that d orbital in which electrons are placed along the x and y axis that is, what is that the d orbital in which uh, the concentration of electrons will be more along the x and y axis? That d orbital along which the electrons are sitting along the x and y axis exactly is dx square minus y square. dx square minus y square. In the dx square minus y square, what is happening? The electron, that is the lobes have been placed along the x axis and the y axis. Now since the lobes are placed along the x and the y axis, we can say that the electrons are sitting along the x axis and along the y axis. The electrons are sitting means what? The concentration of the electrons along the x axis and y axis is more. Now the concentration of the electrons along the x-axis and y-axis is more in this particular dx square minus y square d orbital. The repulsions between the ligand and this particular d orbital is more because the ligand electrons are moving along the x and y-axis and as this 
dx square minus y square d orbital is associated with the electrons along the x and y axis, the repulsions will be more along the x and y axis. As the repulsions are more along the x and y axis, this particular dx square minus y square d orbital will occupy the highest energy level. Occupy the highest energy level. Now let us see what is that d orbital which occupies the next level to the dx square minus y square. The d orbital which occupies the next level to the dx square minus y square. So do remember that dx square minus y square is occupying the highest energy level. With respect to highest energy level, we are going to discuss the energy level of the remaining d orbitals. Now the next d orbital which occupies its level with respect to the highest energy level d orbital that is dx square minus y square is dz square. Now you can ask why it is, why dz square will occupy the next energy level with respect to the dx square minus y square. Because this is dz square only. In the dz square, one of the lobe is placed along the z axis and another lobe is also placed along the z axis. But this particular portion, this particular portion, this particular portion will be along the x and y axis. Since this particular portion is along the x and y axis and as the ligand electrons are approaching uh, along the x and y axis, the next d orbital which experience the maximum repulsion after the dx square minus y square is dz square. So the second one is this dz square. Now, now the ligand electrons are approaching the electrons present on the meter along the x and y axis, right? Now, first one, dx square minus y square has experienced the maximum repulsion and occupy the highest energy level. Next, in the dz square, as this particular portion of the dz square is along the x and y axis, we can say that this will occupy the next level with respect to dx square minus y square. Now, what is that d orbital which experience maximum repulsion after the dz square? So along the x and y axis, the ligand electrons are moving along the x and y axis of the metal. Right. Now, dxy, because in the dxy, d orbital, the lobes are placed in between the axes. The lobes are placed in between the axes. In between the axes means the electrons are sitting in between the x and y axis. The electrons are sitting in between the x and y axis means what term? The electrons concentration is more in between the x and y axis. Now in the square plane or complex, what is happening? The electrons or the ligands are moving along the x and y axis that's the reason it is occupying the highest energy level and as in the dxy the electrons are sitting in between the x and y axis this particular dxy will experience maximum repulsion after dz square dz square so this will be at the third position now coming to the two d orbitals which are left which occupies the first and second position that is which occupies the next both this will occupy the next energy because the energy associated with this is one and same because what is happening in the square planar complexes the electrons or the ligand are approaching along the x and the y axis now in dyz y is a part in dxz x is a part dyz, y is a part and dxz, x is a part. x is a part. So, the energy associated with these two will be 1 and c. Energy associated with the 1 and c because x axis is there in this, y axis is there in this. 
right? So they occupy the same energy level. So to summarize, do remember that in the in the square planar complex, the ligands, that is the electrons or the ligands will approach the electrons on the metal along the x and the y axis since the approach is along the x and y axis whatever the d orbital in which the electrons are sitting along the x and y axis experiences maximum repulsion and what is that d orbital in which the electrons are sitting along the x and y axis that is dx square minus y square so it occupies the highest energy level followed by the second one is dz square because this particular portion of dz square is along the x and y axis. Coming to the next, uh, it is dxy. dxy because in the dxy, the electrons are sitting in between x and y axis. So direct influence is not there along the xy, not, it is not along the x and y axis, in between the x and y axis. That is the reason why it is occupying uh, the third position with respect to dx square minus y square. And coming to dyz and dxz, both will experience the same repulsion because in the dyz, y is there and in the dxz, x is there. So they experience the same relation, the same repulsion. So that's the reason they occupy the same energy level. So these are the basics, these are the elementary principles for understanding the crystal field splitting and square plane of complexes. So with this elementary principles by which we can understand the crystal field splitting in the square plane of complex, let us discuss about crystal field splitting and square plane of complex in the next video. Thank you for watching this and please do comment so that I can know whether uh, the topics are understandable to you or not. Please do comment.